In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve differential equations using variation of parameters. So let's use this example problem. y double prime plus y is equal to secant x. And this will be restricted on the domain from 0 to pi over 2. Now the first thing we need to do is solve the homogeneous version of that equation, where g is set to 0. Here g is secant x, so this is the non-homogeneous version of that equation. Now we can represent this as y double prime plus 0y prime plus y equals 0. And so we have the coefficients 1, 0, 1, which will be useful in our auxiliary equation. So a is 1, b is 0, c is 1. So we have the equation r squared plus 1 equal to 0. Solving for r, we get r is equal to plus or minus the imaginary number i. So we can write r1 as being 0 plus 1i, and r2 is 0 minus 1i. So r1 is in the form alpha plus beta i. So we could see that alpha is 0, beta is 1. Now the general solution for this homogeneous differential equation is going to be yc is equal to e raised to the alpha x times c1 cosine beta x plus c2 sine beta x. e to the 0 power is just 1. So we get the formula c1 cosine beta is 1, so this will be just x plus c2 sine x. So let's get rid of this. Using variation of parameters, our solution is going to be in the form of u1 y1 plus u2 y2. This is the solution for the non-homogeneous differential equation. So when using variation of parameters, c1 and c2, these constants will be converted into functions u1 and u2. y1 is cosine, y2 is sine. And so we have this expression here. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to write the condition that we're going to impose. And that is that u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 will be equal to 0. So let's go ahead and replace y1 with cosine x and y2 with sine x. So what we're going to do is we're going to find y prime p and y double prime p. And we're going to plug it into this expression. Using that equation and using this one right here, we need to solve for u1 prime and u2 prime. And then we can integrate that to get u1 and u2. Plugging that back in will give us the solution of the non-homogeneous differential equation. So let's replace y1 and y2 in this equation. So we're going to have u1 cosine x plus u2 sine x. Now let's find the first derivative, y prime p. So using the product rule, we're going to differentiate u1, which will give us u1 prime times cosine. And then we're going to keep the first part the same and then differentiate the second part. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we can write this as u1 sine x. Now we need to use the product rule on u2 sine x. The derivative of u2 will be u2 prime times sine. And then we're going to leave the second part the same, differentiate sine, which will give us cosine. Now, notice that we have u1 prime cosine and u2 prime sine. So the sum of these two add up to 0, which means we can eliminate them in this equ equation. So y prime p is going to be equal to u2 cosine minus u1 sine x since these two add up to zero. 
Now our next step is to find the second derivative, y double prime p. So we need to use the product rule again. So it's going to be u2 prime cosine x, and then minus u2 sine x, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then using the product rule on u1 sine x is going to be minus u1 prime sine x, and then minus u1 cosine x. Now the next thing we need to do is plug in y double prime and yp into this equation. Now when we do so, we have y double prime plus y. So we're adding these two expressions. Notice what cancels. Negative 2 sine x and positive u2 sine x, those two will cancel. And uh, u1 cosine x and negative u1 cosine x will cancel as well. So y double prime plus y will equal these two. So replacing y double prime plus y with u2 prime cosine x minus u1 prime sine x, that's going to equal what we have on the right side, which is secant x. So now we have two equations with the variables u1 prime and u2 prime. So we need to use a system of equations to solve for u1 prime and u2 prime. So now let's get rid of a few things just to free up some space. So I'm going to rewrite the formula for y sub p because we're going to need that later. So what do you recommend that we should do in order to solve for u1 prime and u2 prime? What would you say? What we need to do is we need to multiply this equation by cosine x, and we're going to multiply this equation by sine x. So let's start with this one. Here we have u1 prime cosine times sine, and I'm going to write that here. And then it's going to be u2 prime sine times sine, which is going to be u2 prime sine squared x. And that's going to equal 0. Here we have cosine times u1 prime sine. So that's going to be negative u1 prime cosine times sine. And then we have cosine times u2 prime cosine. So that's going to be u2 prime cosine squared. Now secant is 1 over cosine. And so cosine times 1 over cosine will give us 1. All right, so now that we have that, let's add the two equations. I know this is a long problem, but we are on the right track, and it will be finished soon. So adding the two equations, we can eliminate that variable. And so we're going to have u2 prime sine squared x, and then plus u2 prime cosine squared x. That's going to equal 0 plus 1. Our next step is to factor out u2 prime. Now, according to the trig identities, we know that this is a Pythagorean identity. Let me say that again, Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So u2 prime is 1. Integrating both sides, u2 is the antiderivative of 1, which is x. So now, we need to get u1 prime. So we need to pick a formula that's going to help us to do it. Let's use this formula here. So u1 prime cosine, replacing u2 prime with 1, so we're just going to have plus sine, is equal to 0. So let's move sine to the other side. So u1 prime cosine is equal to negative sine. Divided both sides by cosine, we get negative sine over cosine x. So u1 prime is negative tangent x. So integrating both sides, we can get u1. The antiderivative of tangent x is negative ln cosine. So the antiderivative of negative tan is positive natural log cosine x. 
So now we have u2 and u1. So we can plug that in to this equation. So we have y sub p is going to be u1, which is ln cosine x, and then times cosine x plus u2, which is x, and then sine x. So the solution to the differential equation will be the sum of yc plus yp. So yc, we have that here. That's some constant c1 times cosine x plus some constant c2 sine x and then plus cosine x times the natural log of cosine x plus x sine x. Now, to simplify this expression, we could factor out some things. So if we take out sine x, we're going to have c2 plus x times sine x. And then if we factor out a cosine x, we'll have c1 plus the natural log let's use a bracket symbol, the natural log of cosine, and then that is going to be multiplied by cosine x. So this right here is the final answer. So that's how you can solve a second order differential equation using variation of parameters.